Imagine a shimmering green stone, smooth, cool to the touch, and carved by human hands for thousands of years. Jade has adorned the crowns of emperors, the handles of ancient weapons, and the jewelry of those who value not just beauty, but power. But what if I told you this peaceful-looking gem was born from chaos, formed not in stillness, but in the heart of Earth's most violent earthquakes? Today we're cracking open the Earth's crust to understand how jade is forged, not in quiet mines, but along the jagged seams of tectonic fury. From crashing plates to crushing pressure, this is the story of how one of Earth's most treasured gemstones comes from its most violent natural disasters. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What is jade? Well, the name jade actually refers to two different minerals, jadeite and nephrite. They may look similar, smooth, green, often translucent, but chemically, they're very different. Jadeite is a sodium and aluminum-rich silicate, while nephrite is a calcium and magnesium-rich silicate. Jadeite is rarer and typically more vibrant in color, which is why it's especially prized in places like Myanmar, Guatemala, and parts of Japan. Nephrite, on the other hand, is found in places like China, New Zealand, and British Columbia, and has been used in tools and carvings for millennia. But here's where it gets interesting. Jadeite, the more valuable of the two, isn't just rare. It only forms under extreme geological conditions, and we mean extreme. Jadeite doesn't just happen. You need the perfect storm of ingredients high pressure, relatively low temperatures, and the right kind of rock. That combination doesn't exist just anywhere on Earth. It happens deep underground, along the edges of tectonic plates, specifically where one plate is being forced beneath another. This process is called subduction. It's a slow-motion collision where one slab of the Earth's crust dives under another and melts into the mantle. Think of it like two conveyor belts crashing together. One gets shoved down and things get messy. In these zones, oceanic crust, rich in sodium, meets the immense pressure of the Earth's crust above it. As water seeps down through cracks, it carries minerals with it, chemically altering the rocks. When all these factors line up just right, pressure, water, heat, minerals, you get jadeite. But it doesn't form in big pockets or open caverns. No jadeite forms in veins, hidden deep inside rocks called bluschkists and eclogites. These are high-pressure rocks that tell the story of continents in conflict. Now here's the real twist. Jadeite may form under pressure, but some of the most exquisite jade is shaped and revealed by earthquakes. You see, earthquakes don't just shake the surface of the Earth. They also create what scientists call fault zones. These are deep fractures in the crust, where rock is crushed, sheared, and sometimes melted. These are violent places, full of grinding stone and surging fluids. In these zones, the pressure can be thousands of times greater than what we experience at sea level. Fluids rich in sodium, aluminum, and silica rush through these cracks, superheated and under intense pressure. As they move, they deposit tiny crystals of jadeite, slowly building up over thousands, sometimes millions, of years. It's like nature's pressure cooker, and each major earthquake can open new pathways, exposing older jade deposits, or creating new conditions for jadeite to grow. So yes, jade isn't just the result of pressure. It's a child of violent seismic birth. Earthquakes don't just fracture rocks, they also form gemstones. One of the best places to see this in action is in Guatemala, a country that lies along the Ring of Fire, a major zone of tectonic activity encircling the Pacific Ocean. Here, the Caribbean Plate and the North American Plate meet in a grinding, jarring dance. Along this fault, geologists have found jadeite deposits associated directly with ancient subduction zones. In fact, 
Much of the jade used by the ancient Maya civilization came from these fault zones. Archaeologists have found jade masks, beads, and tools, some dating back over 3,000 years. These weren't just decorations, they were objects of immense cultural and spiritual value. And it's fitting, isn't it? The Maya, who built cities in earthquake-prone regions, revered a gem born of that same destructive force. If Guatemala tells us how ancient civilizations valued jade, then Myanmar tells us how modern economies are shaped by it. Myanmar, formerly Burma, produces over 90% of the world's jadeite. The richest deposits lie in a region called Fagan, where the Indian plate is colliding with the Eurasian plate. The jadeite here is prized for its imperial green hue, so vibrant it almost glows. But this beauty comes at a cost. The region is not only geologically volatile, but also politically unstable. Earthquakes, landslides, and even mining-related disasters regularly strike the area. Geologically, though, it's a perfect storm for jade formation. An ancient subduction zone, high-pressure rocks, and ongoing seismic activity. Each tremor can reveal new seams of jade, hidden for millions of years beneath the surface. What's remarkable about jade isn't just how it forms, but how humans have responded to it. We've taken something born in the most violent places on Earth, fractures, faults, and subduction zones, and turned it into something sacred. Jade is carved into statues of gods, emblems of royalty, and talismans for protection. In China, jade is more than a gem. It's a symbol of virtue, balance, and eternity. In Mesoamerica, it was the stone of kings and warriors, and in Maori culture, jade or punamu is a treasure passed from generation to generation, often worn as a sign of identity. And all of it came from earthquakes. The next time you see a piece of jade, whether in a museum, a ring, or a family heirloom, take a moment to consider what it really is. It's not just a stone, it's a geological memoir, a record of tectonic battles and subduction zones, a remnant of chaos turned to calm by the hand of time and the hands of artists. It's Earth's way of showing that beauty can come from destruction, that even in the deepest fractures of the planet, something precious can grow. So now you know. Jade, the smooth green symbol of peace and strength, was forged in earthquakes, sculpted by pressure, and carried to the surface through seismic upheaval. From Guatemala to Myanmar, its journey spans millions of years and the full force of Earth's inner fury. In the end, it's a story of transformation, of how the Earth takes its most violent moments and turns them into art. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.